What's up everyone, Scott here from Chernobyl Studios. Today we're looking at the brand new Modern Doom Drums from Ugratone. You guys know that I like Ugratone. They do a lot of really unique stuff, uh, especially working more into the raw sounding uh, styles of drums instead of having the real hyper processed stuff. So uh, Ron and the guys uh, sent this drum library to me and sponsored this video uh, just to be upfront. But everything I'm going to say about the drums, obviously my opinion. So uh, let's just dive right into this. So here's the store page, all the great information that you need to know about it, some uh, audio samples, uh, the kit pieces themselves. So we're looking at a Ludwig, um, wow, English, a Ludwig Cadson Pearl, um, Wuhan China's, which is kind of like a standard for for um, Ugratone kits, Pisces, Istanbul, Zildjian. So we'll check all that stuff out. And then, you know, just what you need and everything. And remember, guys, you don't need to have the, the contact uh, platform anymore. They created their own Ugratone drum plug-in loader a long time ago. So you don't need to have contact. Let's jump into this. This is the store page. But the store page might look cool, but we want to see what this sounds like. So let's see what this sounds like. I will play this fully mixed demo. It's about two minutes ish. So let's just get started and let's have a listen. All right, so there's a demo track, nice and doomy, type of thick and sludgy. Um, we can talk about the guitar tone a little bit later, but first let's talk about the actual drums. So here they are in their full glory. Here's the interface. Looks really cool. I do like that Ugratone's doing the Ugratone drum plugin platform. I like that because then they can have all their plugins within their own platform, which makes sense. Because, I mean, it makes it easier to switch between different drum kits. I mean, if you have more of their, if you have more than one of their products, you can go between cult drums, for example, modern drums, et cetera, et cetera. And it's just great. Instead of loading different plugins, you know, somewhat how it used to be in the past or, you know, needing to use contact, you know, like with some other uh, libraries out there. So this is what it looks like. We have, you know, the customary five toms, double kick, snare, and a bunch of different symbols. Now, uh, I just uh, took one of the presets that I liked here and I started working with it. One thing I will say off the bat is these drums, I don't think they are as raw as other drums uh, in the series. Like, for example, cult drums, that's literally microphone to shell in the room, nothing done to it. These have been processed a little bit and taken care of. Not too much, though. I mean, they still have a raw flavor to them. But you can hear... You know, they sound like a good organic drum kit. I think the toms are probably the most processed out of all this. Um, oh, I have all this EQ on here too. Um, we'll go through that. Uh, this, the shells, I should say, I really like with this kit. I think the shells are one of the uh, some of the best uh, in Ugratone. I really love the toms. This one, 
they feel very thick and deep which is what i, what I really like because i i'm like to do these type of tom uh linear fills and i like uh, deep thick toms so all the toms sound very thick and deep i really appreciate that i really like it uh this particular kick I like that it has a bit of a like a like a slap sound to it. It doesn't sound overly hyped. For going for the doom style that I did here, I thought it wouldn't make sense to have a clicky, you know, like speed kick type of a of a kick drum that wouldn't make any sense. So I went for more of a, like a mid focused mid uh, slap type of sound, and it sounds great. You still have the attack and it still has the depth, it still has the punch to it. It's awesome. But this snare, I really like a lot. Uh, come on. And it's this, this Ludwig Superphonic. It just sounds like you're hitting it with a hammer. Really enjoy that. I mean, if I solo the drums here, so move ahead. Yeah, it just sounds really nice. It sounds really, I mean, it sounds really nice. What else am I supposed to say? Um, really, when it comes to working with these drums, I found these are probably the most linear in terms of what you do and don't need to do with them. I do find that basic EQ moves work really well with this drum kit. Uh, basic insofar as shaping. You know, we're not fixing problems because they are engineered relatively well. There's no weird sounds or things happening in in the drums themselves you're just shaping them to fit into your mix and i tend to like drums that are you know a bit more scooped not as boxy or cardboardy so i, I will most of my work goes into making sure that i don't have those frequencies all right but let's actually close all this and show the console view so if we go across all the drums here so here are all my drums the green it's just eq and compression letting literally in every single one uh, drums, I just have the devil lock, so to crush, crush it a little bit more for a bit more flavor. But it's very, it's the mix level is very low. But just basic EQ all the way down the board. You know, here's Tom. Like I said, digging out the mids, hyping the highs a little bit. You know, digging out the mids, highs. Um, generally, when when it comes to Tom's, I want to make sure that the attack and the low end are sort of equal. So like I have the I have the smiley face, but I want to have it so that when they play, there we go. When it plays, that they're sort of equal uh, in level. See there, like we're pretty much hitting the line, and that seems to just be a nice, good rule of thumb to where you get balance between the low end and, and attack and high end of the tom. Uh, seems to work for me. I don't, uh, you know, if there's a technical reason for it. Great. Otherwise, no idea. Um, the only thing that I think I could really talk about where the criticism would be with the symbols. Um, let me show you what I mean. So the first thing right off the bat is this symbol here is actually an effect symbol. So I have a couple of different other drum sets from Yugotone, so I picked the splash. This is just like a, 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 a rim click. Um, and I don't really see the use of a rim click, um, I don't know why, and, but, and then these effects are the same thing, you know, more rim clicks, uh, the mega bell's cool, you know, but the rim clicks, I don't really understand, um, I don't care about stacks, I never cared about stacks, I mean, I'm a real drummer, I played real drums, I always thought stacks were silly, um, when I hit a cymbal, I want to have this big explosive, explosive, uh, texture you know i don't want to have a little you know like what you know what is this me personally right i don't i don't get it it's not for me at all um you got your wuhan here of course which is fantastic and then your crashes which are totally cool the hi-hat is very interesting let's just do this like that so the hi-hat is interesting because um it's 15 inches, which means it's a little larger than your average hi-hat. I think the average, if I remember correctly, is 14. 
Yeah, it's 14. So this is a bigger sounding hi-hat, which means that it'll have more weight when it's being hit, supposedly. Now, this is one of the things where I hope maybe in the future Yigertone might be able to spend a little bit of extra time with. It would be the hi-hat articulations. Because the hi-hat pedal, at least in my opinion, sounds like I'm hitting it with the stick. Now, I know that I'm not because you can hear there's a articulation difference here for sure. But um, if I'm doing something, let me show you. Like one thing I like to do that I always like to do is I like to do this hi-hat close thing right here. So it sounds good. It could just sound better if the hi-hat pedal didn't sound like someone was literally slamming their foot on it as hard as possible. Um, the hi-hat close articulation, uh, I think it's more volume based. And this is semi-open and these wide opens. Now this particular hi-hat just sounds very washy to me. Um, it could just be the hi-hat, you know, um, my, maybe I just don't like the cymbal, but there's just not a lot of articulation here. And I don't know what the difference is between wide and semi. Uh, but anyway, uh, I'm really nitpicking because in the mix itself, it sounds good. It really does sound fine. So you can definitely hear the movement in the cymbal. So you can definitely hear the movement in the cymbal. I just think the velocity settings have been based more on volume than they've been based on dynamic playing of the cymbal. But again, um, when we put this in the context of the mix, it really you really can't hear that. So the humanization, you might need to go a little bit more, you might have to do a bit more work with it. Like here, you bring them down a bit further than you would assume, like if you're used to working with a different drum library or something like that. So you got to bring it down to where it sounds natural to the, to the ear when you're playing in the mix. So that's the most thing. Don't do this in your vacuum because you'll set everything up in the vacuum and then you'll put a guitar next to it and then it won't make any sense. So you need to do it with the music playing. The, oh, one last thing, actually, before we move on here. Uh, one thing I always like is this drum uh, matrix here. This makes creating a drum map so easy, so I just would like to point out to the guys at Eagertone that I really like this because I can create a drum map in five minutes. Uh, it's great. Uh, I really enjoy it. It's very easy to understand. Uh, so, and you can also remap everything, which fantastic. So... Uh, great, and then I, you know, my drum map is really easy to make, which I have here, and you can see it. You know, here it is in all its glory. Bam! And here are all the things that I'm using, so it's awesome. I really like that aspect uh, of the plugin quite a lot. And don't forget about the plugin where if you have thing, if you have something selected, you still have the mix, FX, and routing uh, uh, windows to choose from. So there's a lot that you can actually do in the plugin to include uh, putting in your own one-shot samples or something like that, or you know, loading your own, things like this. So the, the sampler itself is pretty robust, and there's a lot of stuff that you can do in it that's cool. But the, the, the drums themselves uh, sound quite nice. So let's, what we're going to do now is let's take all my processing off the drums so we can hear you know, what it sounds like before I did my EQ and compression to it. And remember, all I did was EQ and compression, and then I ran it through a um, the API vision channel here, mostly just for compression and a bit more EQ. So I'll turn this off too. So we're going to have pretty much the raw drums.
So you can see that uh, I didn't even do that much. I just did a shaping EQ and a touch of compression. It's not like I magically made the drums sound like they somehow. I didn't magically make the drums sound totally different. However, how they sounded and the preset, I've just I accentuated them with the EQ moves that I made and stuff like that for what I was doing in the mix. So as far as the drums are concerned, I think these are great. I personally like these drums a lot. I really like the toms and I love this snare uh, a lot. It's one of the better shells, um, in my opinion, that you guys have done. I just hope that they can maybe uh, spend a bit more time on the hi-hat with their next release and maybe uh, the effects symbols, I don't know, <laughs> more bells, I guess, or I, I don't really know. Because I, I, me personally, I don't give a crap about the stacks or rim clicks. I don't care. Uh, I would just like to have more symbols. So splash symbols, for example. You know, instead of two effects symbols, maybe have a, an 8-inch splash and a 10-inch splash. You know, and then uh, a 12-inch splash. So you have more symbol um, opportunities to do melodic passages with your drums or something like that. But that's literally me just nitpicking. That's th These are just like requests. There's nothing absolutely wrong with, with the kit as it stands now. It works, it functions, it loads fast, and it sounds awesome. So the kit itself, good to go. Now, I know you guys are going to be curious about the guitar tone. So if you don't care about the guitar tone, video's over. Go and check the link below to pick up the drums. All right, but I know you guys will be curious, so here's the guitar tone. It's quad tracked, and I have one set of tracks going through an HM2 into the Audiority Solidus, okay? This is pretty much my go-to setup when I want to do HM2 tones because the valve state is already pretty raw and aggressive sounding as it is, but doesn't have a lot of gain. So you have headroom, as it were, to push the amp a little bit with the HM2 uh, and then bring down the distortion so you don't get uh, like ridiculous HM2 sounds. Um, so it's actually still a bit leg uh, not, not legible. It's still uh, understandable what you're trying to play, right? Not a lot of gain. Awesome. And this is all going through a new angle cab here that I bought, which is the Sin 77, which uh, is has the DB 77s from Eminence, if I remember all this off the top of my head correctly. So just different speaker sounds, but in the cabinet that I, in a cabinet that I really like. All right, and that's that. Uh, then we have the Randy, which is, now we're just gonna go, go through a regular green screamer through the Audiority Audi Randy, okay? And this is feeling out the, the inside of the guitar tone. So you can hear it's not, uh, super hyped in the high end or the presence. It has it's more mid focus, more a little bit low end focus, and this is just so it fills out the guitar tone from the HM2. So we get the HM2 in the background, and but we still have the articulation from the tone. Uh, from that normal guitar tone, as it were. And this is going through th the, the same exact uh, amp uh, cabinet, excuse me. Okay. And then my processing is very, very simple. It's just EQ. I mean, I, I, I'm a broken record, but I, every time I do this, I just say it's the guitar tone mastery sequence. You know, EQ, filtering um, with, the, with the API that you guys know I love, uh, and then Soothe, which is irreplaceable now for me and my guitar chains. And then L1, that's it. There's nothing happening, nothing out of the ordinary. Um, and it's all very minimal. Yep, so that's that. Um, 
a little bit on the guitar tone there. If you would like to have a more in-depth video about how I would like do an HM2 guitar tone like this, you know, using different amps and stuff, just leave a comment below and I'll make a separate video about it. But I'd like to keep this video more or less about Eager Tone and the modern Doom drums. So the, my final verdict about the modern Doom drums is they're great. I think there's a definite increase in quality with the shells. The toms have that thickness uh, and the juicy, you know, thickness and the bite that I really like that I'm looking for. They're really easy to shape with EQ, so you get a nice thick tone. Kicks are awesome. The snare is probably one of the best that they've done. It has a nice organic crack to it. I really like it. It just sounds fantastic. Um, I think the cymbals are going to be the weakest part of this library, but um, th they're more than fine for what you need to do. Just take a little bit of extra time making sure you get the right velocity settings so you you know you can get the right humanization settings, and you'll be okay. In the context of the mix, you're fine. I mean, this is not a jazz kit. You know, we're not trying to do super finite, small detail stuff on the hi-hat. This is for Doom, you know, and heavier styles of, styles of music with a 15-inch <laughs> hi-hat, right? So, I mean, take, take the criticism with a grain of salt, you know? And don't think that, you know, I... One little inch of criticism means I hate the entire thing. That's not true at all. I love these drums. I've had a lot of fun playing with them. It's just my opinion of where I think they could improve with the next library um, that they end up putting out. All right, so that's it, guys. Uh, Eucratone Modern Doom Drums. Link in the description below. It is an affiliate link, by the way. I just want to let you know. But link below if you want to check this out. And uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. See you guys in the next video. Have a good one.